very good afternoon to you, Brenda. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. So looking at the market, it's up one day, down the next day. What are you making of all this activity that we're seeing right now? Um, we've seen local um, participation in the market high for the past two days, um, coming through from yesterday. Foreign investors have mainly been uh, stayed away from the market, and so it's just been mainly local institutional investors that have been in the market. And we think, I think from tomorrow, we'll see foreigners coming in again and trying to see where they can find bargains in the market and taking them up. So which stocks are our locals buying right now? Um, today we saw locals mainly buying Williamson Tea, we saw them buy Kenya Airways, and we also saw them buy banks, banking stock, KCB, Cop Bank, and Barclays Bank. So it's just mainly the large cap counter still that where locals are um, taking bargains where they can see. We also had Mumia's Sugar moving 451 million shares in today's uh, trading session. Is there a particular reason why we saw such movements on that stock today? Well, Mumias has been trading um, quite a bit of volumes for the past few weeks, and this is just mainly on local institutional investors buying. And in my opinion, I think it offers a bargain, especially now that they've already commissioned their ethanol and their water bottling plant. So I think investors expect that that will all go well for their um, income and their earnings going forward. So I think they're just trying to take a bargain there um, because they think it will do better. Um, there's some news out today. M-Pesa could be forced to increase transaction costs by around 10%. Well, that says the Treasury tries to impose a levy on transactions uh, made uh, by that uh, mobile transfer service. And uh, the Treasury has said that they don't see mobile operators passing on uh, that cost uh, to consumers. Well, they shouldn't be passing on that cost to consumers. Uh, do you see this happening? No, um, I think um, M-Pesa and other transactional services are going to pass on this cost to the consumers. And at the end of the day, consumers are the ones who are going to suffer the brunt of this excise tax. Um, but we've seen some other transfer services, for example, Airtel Money, have decided to, put, um, to make transfers at, at zero cost, not charging the customers anything. And so, I mean, that puts pressure on M-Pesa not to increase the cost of transfer services. They already took a slight increase early in the year. So it'll just be interesting to see what will happen once and if this rule or this bill is passed. Indeed, interesting to see what will happen to the broader communications uh, space. And uh, what are your thoughts of what could possibly happen if this deal is passed? Um, well, we'll definitely see um, an effect um, on, on M-Pesa. I mean, M-Pesa accounts for about 17% of service revenues for Safaricom. So Safaricom could take a hit depending on how they um, go about this whole issue. If they go about increasing um, the, the cost of transfer services, then we could easily see um, more clients and customers reducing the number of transactions that they, that they, that they take about. And so that could hurt M-Pesa. And on the other hand, Safaricom could decide not to increase the cost and take in the cost, and obviously that will have a negative impact on their earnings. And that not only limited to the telecommunications space, we could perhaps see effects coming through for the banking sector. This 10% excise duty could hit money transfers really handled by the banks. Yeah, um, this is also going to hit the banking sector, and not only on transfers, because the way the bill was written, it's other financial transactions. And other transactions also include ATM fees, loan processing, checkbook fees. And so, I mean, this could hit banks. Um, Non-interest income account for about 30 to 40 percent of most banking, rev most large caps revenue. And so obviously this is going to have a large effect, again, depending on how they go about this whole excise tax increase. Looking at uh, the shilling sitting at 85 against the dollar at this stage, uh, what is your outlook for the shilling? We know that inflation is uh, trending lower. We're sitting in an environment of uh, low interest rates. We do have the central bank continue to come into the market uh, to mop up a shilling, uh, to strengthen the shilling sitting at, uh, they mopped up about $100.1 million in the session. Well, the shilling has mainly remained stable. Of course, it has been weakening slowly, especially because the central bank has reduced the c central bank rate. And it's really, going forward, what, what will um, 
effect the, the shilling is what central what choice a central bank is gonna make for it. So in the next meeting, if they reduce a central bank rate, then obviously we will see the shilling weaken further. But um, if, if they maintain it at the rate that it is, and it probably will remain stable at 85. So this, def this will just really depend on what central bank, the actions that they're going to take going forward, especially with the central bank rate. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, Brenda. That was uh, Brenda Kitinji. She's a research analyst at Standard Investment Bank, joining us from our studios in Nairobi.